Coming up, Kim Jones is going to tell us how we're going to clean up Bluffton for the fall. And Bluffton football head coach Ken Cribb has the Bluffton Bobcat football report. It's all coming up right now on the Bluffton News. Welcome to the Bluffton News. I'm Annalisa Itkor, and we have a lot to cover, business, entertainment, and of course, the latest local news. But first, let's start with Bluffton's current headlines. Jasper County School District Board Member Barbara Clark recently earned recognition by the South Carolina School Boards Association for achievement in the association's 2011-2012 Boardmanship Institute. SCSBA is the statewide professional organization serving as a source of information, training, and a voice for the state's 81 school district boards. The institute, established in 1982, offers a year-round training curriculum to help board members develop skills and stay abreast of state and national educational issues. Workshops focus on school law, advocacy and legislation, improving board operations, leadership for improving student achievement, and other timely topics. Barbara Clark reached level three by earning 100 points within two consecutive years or less. Through the receipt of a Federal Library Services and Technology Act grant, the Beaufort County Library is hosting an ambitious series of events to celebrate One County Reads One Country, which takes place primarily during the months of September and October of this year. The intent of this project is to engage the community in a thoughtful dialogue about the selected country, Afghanistan, an important and critical part of the world by exploring Afghani history and culture through a variety of programming. It is hoped that through these activities, which are for all ages, that the Buford County Library contributes to a greater awareness and understanding of another people and culture. For more information about the One County Reads One Country project, visit bufordcountylibrary.org forward slash OCROC or contact Jan O'Rourke at 843-255-6464. And the third annual Diaper Drive to Benefit Area Families will be held September 18th from 5 to 8 p.m. at the Chick-fil-A in Bluffton. The drive will benefit Bluffton Self-Help and the Deepwell Project of Hilton Head Island. Many low-income families cannot foot the monthly $100 plus expense of keeping a baby in clean, dry diapers, and many only purchase one diaper a day, which can increase the child's risk of potential health problems. Community members are asked to drop off unopened packages of disposable diapers during the September 18th drive. Although most sizes are needed, the most requested sizes are three, four, and five. For those who cannot attend the one night drive, there are three alternate drop-off locations that you can see listed on your screen. These businesses will accept donations September 10th through the 18th during business hours. And here's what's happening around the state. South Carolina's chief accountant says there's no money for nearly $15 million worth of projects approved in the state budget. Comptroller General Richard Ekstrom has announced that the surplus for the fiscal year that ended June 30th was $14.7 million less than the legislature expected. After state economic advisors revised their revenue projections for 2011-12, the legislature designated nearly $400 million of that anticipated surplus within the 2012-2013 budget. Those one-time designations were to be funded in the order listed after Ekstrom closes the books for the last fiscal year. The lower than anticipated surplus means the bottom part of that list won't get funded. That includes $3 million for infrastructure in rural areas, $500,000 for Arts Commission grants, $1 million for the state farmers market, and $200,000 to advertise the Southeastern Wildlife Exposition. And an Army Master Sergeant has pleaded guilty to accepting thousands of dollars in gratuities from contractors during his deployment to Iraq as a field operating officer at a forward operating base. The U.S. Attorney's Office said that 52-year-old Master Sergeant Julio Soto Jr. of Columbia, Georgia, has pleaded guilty to one count of conspiracy to accept illegal gratuities. Soto and a co-conspirator sought, received, and accepted illegal gratuities for helping Iraqi contractors gain U.S. government contracts. 
checks, then used the gratuities to purchase postal money orders and mail them to the United States. Soto faces up to five years in prison, a fine of $250,000, and up to three years of supervised release. Under his plea agreement, he agreed to pay $62,542 plus interest in restitution to the U.S. And finally, a new federal credit union branch run entirely by students is opening on the University of South Carolina campus. University spokeswoman French Brewer said the newest branch of the Carolina Collegiate Federal Credit Union is set to open in the Russell House University Union Center. Brewer says the new branch is run entirely by students from the College of Hospitality, Retail and Sport Management. The federal credit union is open to faculty, staff and students at the university and its branches around the state. It is also open to those at other institutions of higher learning in the state such as Coastal Carolina University and technical schools such as Midlands Technical College. For more information on these headlines and more, please check out the media sources you see listed on your screen. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Coming up, B.J. Frazier of the Bluffton Sun covers everything there is to cover in Bluffton as we bring you hot off the presses. The smoked Chipotle burrito is really good. Yeah, my zesty cheesesteak burrito is great. Are you familiar, Pete, with the phrase, don't mess with success? Yeah. Because this is not only messing with success, this is taking success to the cliff and shoving success over. Success said, oh, please, I'll do anything. Leave me alone. These burritos didn't even hear that. They heard, oh, put, and that was it. It was just like, wah. <laughs> Egg everywhere. Wake up to sirloin steak and fluffy eggs with the new zesty cheesesteak and smoked Chipotle breakfast burritos. This is how you sonic. Welcome back to the Bluffton News. Joining me now is BJ Frazier of the Bluffton Sun. So BJ, I understand we've got some exciting stuff happening at Bluffton Middle School. Uh, we certainly do. Uh, since the school opened, they've been uh, using the uh, athletic fields at McCracken. Uh, so if you're a student at the middle school and you wanna try out for a team, you don't have your own team. So what they've been doing is going over to McCracken and playing on those teams, which has been fine, but the uh, budget has just been approved for a new $2 million athletic complex on the location, on land that's been acquired, and it's going to include some sporting fields, uh, tennis courts, uh, field house, and, and, and parking and so forth. And what it will mean, I think, is a uh, huge boost to the school spirit because now they have their own teams, you'll probably get wider participation, and all of this, uh, the construction and, and implementation will probably start next spring and be ready for the 2013-2014 uh, uh, school year. So that's great news. Very cool. Now where can we get more information on this, BJ? Uh, that's gonna be, uh, if you look in this week's Bluffton Sun, we've got a, a great, uh, great feature story on it, so uh, enjoy. Cool, that's gonna be exciting. Now, what is this I hear that we are moving towards safer courtrooms in Bluffton and Beaufort? Yes, well, there's always been a concern at the magistrate courts because there's no security officers present. And as we all know, emotions can run high, not to talk about you know who's coming into the courtroom and what they're bringing and so forth. And so the budget has been approved to have two new security officers uh, in those courtrooms and in the halls and so forth, just to keep a lid on things. Um, and fortunately, there are just two newly retired uh, 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 officers that are willing to do the job. So we have the budget, we have the money, and we have the experienced officers that will, uh, that will make us all feel a little more safer. That's always good news. Now, real quick, what's happening at the Don Ryan Innovation Center? Well, there are two new businesses there. One is the ISS Group. It's a software firm out of New Jersey. It's just been announced. We don't know how many employees or so forth. And as you know, this is an incubator up on Bluffton Parkway, and, and it, they're going to try and help grow that business. It will be more jobs and, and a more stable economy for the area. And then uh, Bottles Up Glass, it's a uh, small little company that was in Old Town uh, making uh, water bottles out of recycled materials, which is a great, great idea. And now they're relocating to the Don Ryan Center for the support and the uh, resources to make them grow. So good stuff. This has been a terrific opportunity for Bluffton. Thank you so much for the good news, BJ. You're welcome, thank you. And Shelly West Hodges has a special guest for today's Bluffton Business Report. 
Hi, I'm here today at Taylor's Quality Landscape Supply, located between 170 and Highway 278. And here with me is Jarek Taylor, the owner and operator of Taylor's. Now, Taylor's has been here for about three years. Jarek, tell us a little bit about how you ended up in Bluffton and starting your business here. We started a landscape supply company back in 2004 up in Lexington, South Carolina. I was a former teacher and football coach and uh, looking for a way to make a little extra money. Started selling pine straw on the side of the road before school and after school. And one thing led to another and we had a full landscape supply company on our hands. And then from there we, we looked at other opportunities to open up other stores and we ended up down here in Bluffton. Had a friend of mine who saw a need and told me about the need and just said you do really good down in the Bluffton. Of course, since moving down here September three years ago, um, back in 2009, we've really enjoyed the low country and we really have it, you know, are pleased with what's going on down here. Well, great. Well, we're happy to have you here. Now, you attribute your strong work ethic through being a former football player. Now, tell us a little bit about your background. I know you were a Gamecock. Yes, I did. I did have the unique opportunity to walk on at the University of South Carolina and play football for the Gamecocks. And through that, obviously, being a walk on, you got to work extra hard and um, earned a scholarship uh, there. And, you know, love, just love playing football. But, you know, that's my character. I think it's how I was raised. Uh, don't mind working hard and love an opportunity for a challenge and uh, you know got to give credit where credit's due. We would not be where we are today if it wasn't um, for my relationship with Jesus Christ and uh, what all that means to me and personally in my own life. Okay now Taylor's is a nursery but you also do other supplies here for local businesses. Tell us a little bit about your clientele. We sell to anybody and everybody who wants to give us some money. Uh, but whether you're a landscape contractor, a homeowner that wants to do it themselves, or if you're a builder, um, we do sell to everybody. We, don't, we do not do the installs unless it's a palm tree uh, where we already have the equipment. But when it's uh, just a supply, that's what we try to stick to. And if you need an install, we would like to refer a local quality uh, landscaper to do that install for you. But yeah, we're open to anybody that wants to buy product. And we're a full nursery. Palm trees, plants, trees, shrubs, annuals, perennials, um, pine straw, mulch, rock, sands, and gravels, and um, natural stone, field stone, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Okay, well, great. Well, we're happy to have you here, and this is a great place. We encourage people to contact Jarek here at Taylor's Quality Landscape Supply, and we look forward to an event. I believe you're going to be hosting a chamber event out here after hours, so that will be a great time for people to come out as well. Yes, and we're uh, hopefully by then we'll have our outdoor entertainment area uh, completed uh, with a full outdoor kitchen, uh, fireplace, and working grill with a big pergola, uh, with some TVs. And our whole goal behind that is to you know feature um, some outdoor entertainment. Well, we love that. We love outdoor entertainment, and we love football. And thank you, Jarek. This is a great business. We're happy to have you here. Back to you. Thanks so much, Shelley. When we return, we'll learn all about the 24th annual Beach and River Sweep coming up in Bluffton in September. And head coach Ken Cribb from Bluffton Football is going to give us all the lowdown on the Bobcats when we return from the break. Tara's Men's Den, located beside Tara's Salon at the Moss Creek Village, is a full-service salon for men only. Open Monday through Saturday from 9.30 a.m. to 7 p.m., we offer haircuts, color, highlights, waxing, and treatments for hair loss. No appointment necessary, so come enjoy a relaxing atmosphere for men only, and don't forget senior discounts every Wednesday. Call or visit us today. Our number is 843-837-5555. Welcome back to the Bluffton News. Joining us now is Kim Jones, who is the Water Quality Program Manager for the Town of Bluffton. Now, Kim, you're here to talk about a very exciting event that's coming up this fall. Sure is. In a couple of weeks, we're going to have the 24th Annual Beach Sweep River Sweep here in Bluffton. Now, what are the details on this year's event? This will be held on September 15th from 9 a.m. till about 11 or 11.30 a.m. at the Oyster Factory Park at the end of Wharf Street in Old Town Bluffton. Now, what else is the town of Bluffton doing to improve conditions in the May River? Sure. You know, this is one of our community outreach events to involve the community in our efforts to keep the May River healthy and clean for all of us to enjoy. 
But additionally, the town's stormwater division is doing a number of projects to improve stormwater, which is the water from rain that drains into the May River so that we have cleaner stormwater, hopefully giving us a cleaner May River. Well, we've certainly had plenty of storm water lately. Sure have. <laughs> now, how does this cleanup differ from the spring May River cleanup? This one's a little bit different focus. It's part of the South Carolina Sea Grant and South Carolina Department of Natural Resources one day statewide volunteer cleanup. So literally across the entire state of South Carolina, we're gonna have thousands of volunteers cleaning up beaches, marshes, waterways, rivers, and we're gonna collect data on that. Um, the types of trash that are found, the amount of that trash, and that actually gets coalesced, added up, and it helps to direct outreach efforts to reduce the number of trash items that are found most frequently. Gotcha. Now real quick, for those of us who want to participate in the river sweep, what should we be bringing to this? A good attitude, a friend, and some shoes you don't mind getting dirty. It's that simple. <laughs> we have all the supplies that you need as bags and data cards and bug spray and sunscreen and water and snacks. So seriously, everything's there for you. We just need bodies. Um, anybody who might have a boat or a kayak who's willing to put it in the water and, and do the river side of the cleanup, we could definitely use that kind of help as well. The rest of us will be walking the streets um, with safety vests on, safety is important, and preventing trash from our roadways from washing into the river again with that storm water. All right. Well, Kim, thanks so much for being here and best of luck for a great event. Thank you. I am now pleased to welcome Ken Cribb, who is the head football coach for Bluffton High School. Ken, it's been so exciting to see the Bobcats continue with their success. What I'm curious about, you lost an awful lot of key playmakers on both sides of the ball this year. How have you managed to keep things rolling? Well, you know, these young kids are, are waiting in line for their position, their spots, and uh, just a lot of excitement. They have a passion for what they do. And, uh, you know, we graduated some great players, but uh, these young kids come up from junior varsity waiting on their opportunity to shine and uh, just r real pleased for uh, with their efforts and their uh, work ethic. So um, they're really doing well. They just step right in. What exactly is it that motivates the Bobcats? You know, there's, there's several key things, but one of the biggest motivational factors is the Bobcat Nation. I can't tell you how much the kids uh, get excited about the whole community filling those stands and the noise they make and, uh, you know, I hope they come out every Friday night and continue this uh, support of these kids and how hard they're working, but that's a, a big time motivator for these kids. Great. Now, I know that right now you don't have any major Division I prospects. With that in mind, uh, how are you continuing to put up these impressive stats? Well, it's, it's their passion for what we do and it's the teamwork. We do a lot of team building uh, activities, uh, do a lot together, and they really look out for each other and work together. The, the, the team concept is just huge with these kids, and uh, they believe in what they do. They, uh, they're very passionate with this offense and defense. Uh, we're utilizing our speed, and it's just a lot of fun to see these you know, kids keep overachieving. Every week they overachieve, and I, I don't mean that as an insult. I mean, I think that's a big compliment for a kid to really outperform his ability. Right. Now, what game are we looking forward to here? <laughs> Every Friday night. Okay. Well, it is very exciting to see how the Bluffton community turns out to support the Bobcats. I know that we will continue to do so. Looks like you're doing a terrific job. It looks like the players are doing a terrific job, and we will look forward to this fall football season. I thank you so much, and uh, we look forward to Friday, every Friday night and seeing that stadium packed. All right. Well, thanks for taking time out of your day. Thank you so much. Okay, so it's a romantic dinner for two. Now, I've already cut some tomato. Time for the vinaigrette. You are gonna love this. Okay, we need some sesame seeds. My favorite pan. Now, what's really important is... With Marilad cabinets, you'll discover function that's irresistible. <clears throat> Good thing I'm not the jealous type. Always working hard to help you make the most of your recreation time. Our entertainment reporter Rodney Vaughn has outdone himself this week. He's got a special entertainment report. Rodney?
Thanks a lot. And I am here today in studio with John Cranford and Randy Ruccolata from Cranford and Sons. Now they're just back off their new self-titled CD that was their debut CD, Cranford and Sons. And we want to talk a little bit today about an upcoming tour that you guys are interested in. You're participating with this and it's going to be a little bit more than just the Hilton Head area. Is that right? Yeah, we're going out to Austin um, doing a slew of dates, about 12 shows. Middle to end of September, um, we're sort of zigzagging in the south, starting in Sarasota, Florida, going out to Austin, Texas, and sort of making our way back up to the Atlanta and Nashville scene. And then actually our last show on the Southern Stomp Tour will be September 23rd at Riley's Plaza, where the brew pub and the boardroom sort of coexist out on their patio in their parking lot. That sounds really cool. Now, you guys are not doing this as a solo tour. It's kind of a joint effort with a couple of other artists, right? Yeah, we're partnering with Blue Rock Records, which uh, Mackenzie Eddy is sort of uh, heading this whole operation. She uh, She's a local, uh, born and raised Hilton Head um, girl, and she moved to New York and got involved with Blue Rock Records. And she's sort of partnered with us, uh, both with helping us promote the new album as well as doing the tour. And uh, then Sean O'Connell and Kat CHR will also be on tour with us uh, for that leg of the tour. Awesome. Some great artists. Now, Mackenzie worked with you on your new CD that you're going to do in studio, and you're going to sell that during your tour, right? Correct. It's really like a project specifically for the tour. It's called The South, The Sound, and The Strawberry Heart. Awesome. And it's uh, it's definitely got like a Cranford and Sons vibe, but it's very it's very different than anything we've been doing. It's it's kind of new waters, and it's a real it's it's been really fun. It's you know four or five six people all writing and recording. Um, the crew came in last week from New York, and we wrote for a few days, and then we've been in the studio here at LA Implant with Greg Critchley, who's engineering. Um, and doing the new record here. Great, great. Randy, now, uh, you're excited to go on the road? Is this your first kind of, I guess, nationwide tour? Uh, no. I toured from uh, almost all the 90s. Um, I w I've actually toured for a lot of portion of my adulthood. Uh, I'm excited to get back on the road. I, it's definitely in my blood, and uh, it's, it's home for me. Okay, now, you're the driver for the group. That sounds a little dangerous, but I guess... <laughs> I guess you guys will be all right out there on the highway. Well, yes, uh, I'm the designated DD, and uh, it, it works out pretty well in everybody's favor. Well, you guys have a great local fan base, and you have a great sound, and you get a good vibe from the audience, and I know you have some groupies that follow around with you. What? And, yeah, I know. I never could imagine that. <laughs> so that's really great that you're taking it on the road, and you're going to be working with some other artists. Now, um, locally on the tour, what locations do you have? We're doing uh, Hilton Head on September 23rd. Charleston on September 22nd and that's I mean that's really the closest other than Sarasota or Atlanta or Nashville um, and we may be booking a show in Raleigh as well. Right so that's great so people can catch you here for the kickoff and then come back and catch you when the tour finishes up and and you'll have the CDs for available for sale. Yep. yep. That's awesome. Well I wish you guys the best of luck on your tour and I certainly do appreciate you being with me this morning. Thanks a lot. Okay. We appreciate it. All right thank you guys. Thanks, Rodney. That all sounds like so much fun. Well, I am pleased to introduce you to Lucas, our Bluffton News Pet of the Week. Talk about bad breaks in life. Lucas survived being born into a hoarding situation. But look at that face. Look at that enthusiasm that this little guy radiates. At just under 20 pounds, Lucas is not even a year old, and he is always at the kennel door looking for the right human to fall in love with him and bust him out of this place. This Pomeranian Terrier mix is a friend to all things two-legged and four-legged alike. Lucas could be the perfect new addition to your family. To meet Lucas or for more information about other adoptable animals, please contact Brookshaven Animal Rescue at 843-757-7387. Thanks for joining us for the news program that is all Bluffton all the time. I'm Annalisa Itkor for the Bluffton News. We'll see you next time.